Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Receive mercy. You don't deserve it. Receive it. You should be slapped upside the head, but receive mercy. You should never get a prayer answered again, but receive mercy and come boldly to the throne. Today I want to talk to you about mercy and peace. Because God is merciful and he expects us to be merciful. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. John 14, 27 tells us plainly that he has left us his peace. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives do I give unto you, but my own special peace. The kind of peace that operates in the midst of the storm. The kind of peace that operates when you're not getting your way. The kind of peace that operates when you have a whole bunch of enemies. He said, my peace I leave with you. Then he gave an instruction, so stop allowing yourselves to be upset and disturbed. We know that he gives us his peace, but then he wants us to be peacemakers. Matthew 5. Blessed are the makers and the maintainers of peace, for they shall be called the sons of God. He didn't say the children of God. He said the sons of God. And I believe that refers to maturity. Because I can tell you that if you are going to choose a life of peace, you cannot remain a baby Christian and do that. If you want to have peace, and if you want to keep peace with people, then you got to grow up. Peace is so valuable. It, it, honestly, I lived for so many years without peace. I grew up in a home that I didn't even know what peace was. And I continued the same thing that I had grown up around for many, many years myself. And finally, when I got so fed up with being upset, and I said, I've got to have peace, God. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what I have to change. I've got to have peace. And it took several years, really, for me to find out all the ways that the enemy was stealing my peace because he sets you up to get you upset. <laughs> the enemy knows exactly what bothers us. We have some of the goofiest things happen to us in hotels. It's just like... I, it, it's, just, it's, it's just downright hysterical. If I kept a record for a year, you'd just be like, you've got to be kidding. So my, my Saturday thing today was, because it's something every day. Today, I got up. You know, by the time I get up on Saturday morning, I'm doing well to get up. I don't need any hassle, you know. And so I got up and I went and turned my coffee pot on. I carry a cappuccino machine with me. And people think I'm crazy, but I said, well, if you travel as much as me, the few things I really like, I'm going to have them if I'm going to live on the road. So <laughs> I carry it with me in my coffee pods and my milk and my cream, and I froth it all up, and I have it while I study in the morning. So I turned the coffee pot on, went and washed my face, went back, and the coffee pot wasn't hot. Nothing would work. So I noticed yesterday that it was a little bit wimpy that the coffee wasn't coming out of it very strong and I thought well maybe it just needs to be cleaned or you know whatever but this morning it really wasn't working at all and so I didn't just give up I felt like that there was something wrong with the plug see these words of knowledge will operate in every area of your life <laughs> I had faith for that coffee pot to be healed <laughs> because I behave better when I've had my coffee Amen. Woo. And so I picked it up and I took it to another plug and it was on the same string of plugs. There was obviously something wrong with the electric coming to that one side of my room because it was getting maybe about one quarter power, just enough to make everything, the lights were kind of dim and the coffee was dribbling but nothing was hot. Now this cappuccino machine is not light and I'm still like haven't even washed my face yet so here, I'm, I got the machine again, and I'm taking it now into the bathroom. 
<laughs> and I finally got my coffee made. It worked in there. And, but the thing that, just, that I just marvel at now, at, at the way God changes us, I did all of that, didn't get upset, didn't complain, didn't, I just thought, well, God, I'd really like to have my coffee, but, you know, this don't work. I'll send somebody to get it, but I'm having coffee one way or the other. <laughs> but the, the thing is, is 10 years ago, that would have stolen my peace. I would have got myself so upset that it would have probably taken most of the day to get over it. Can I tell you something? Once you let yourself get really upset, it takes a lot of energy from you. And it takes a long time to calm down. So I vote for not getting upset to start with. Amen. So the devil sets us up to get us upset. He knows what buttons to push. If we just knew ourselves as well as he knows us, we'd be in a lot better shape. So God wants us to learn his character. Why, why would I put mercy and peace together? Well, simply because if you don't ever learn how to receive the mercy of God for yourself, then you can never be at peace with God and you can never be at peace with yourself. How many of you understand that? If you don't receive the mercy of God, then every time you make a mistake, you've got to be mad at yourself. And every time you make a mistake, you're going to have to go through the agony of thinking God's mad at you. And it's going to cause you to withdraw from him rather than going boldly to the throne to get the help that you need. You have to understand the beauty, the extravagance of mercy. And if we don't know how to give other people mercy, if we don't know how to let the mercy of God flow through us, then we can never have peace with people because you're going to be mad at somebody all the time. If there's anybody in your life right now that you're mad at, you can get over it in one instant by deciding to give them mercy. And then right away your soul screams, but it's not fair. I don't think we can give other people mercy until we really fully understand the depth of our own wretchedness. Thank God he doesn't give us what we deserve. Thank God that his mercy is new every day. Every day his mercy is new. Now, and I think mercy is more about attitude than anything else. I think we're always afraid somebody's going to get by with something if we don't try to punish them. And you know, the point really is, is that sin brings its own punishment. Let's just say that someone, young girl maybe, gets involved sexually with somebody and has a child in her teenage years and she still has to deal with the result of that. Even though God forgives her sin and even though God is merciful toward her, she still has to deal with the situation. It's still going to affect her life and she's, she has to deal with the results. So we don't have to punish people by shutting them out of our lives and trying to make them feel worse than they already do. We need to have an attitude of mercy that says, but for the grace of God, there go I. Amen? People don't get by with anything. That part of their life is between them and God. What we need to do is just have a merciful attitude toward them and realize that if God's mercy wasn't new every day for us, our own sin would consume us. Now, mercy is a manifestation of grace and grace is a manifestation of God's love. And so these things really are all connected together. But Let's look at a couple of scriptures just to see the nature of God. Psalm 103, 8 through 12. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, 
Come on, do you have a quick temper? Are you long suffering or are you got a short fuse? You know what? If if you get angry real easily, it's not the character of God. You need to get over that. You need to become long suffering. <laughs> Amen. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger, plenteous in mercy and loving kindness. He will not always chide or be contending. Neither will he keep his anger forever. Neither will he hold a grudge. You know, God doesn't really tell us to never get angry. He tells us not to stay angry. Anger is an emotion. And to be honest, when somebody really mistreats you, you're going to feel anger. But you can choose what you're going to do with it. You don't have to live by your feelings. One of the things that I know is going to come up in your heart a lot as I preach today is, well, I can't help the way I feel. I can't help the way I feel. I can't help the way I feel. I agree, you can't. But you can do something about the way you act. Come on now. I don't want you to forget that. Maybe you can't help the way you feel, but you can choose how you're going to behave. You know why? Because you have power, unlimited, immeasurable, unsurpassed power of the Holy Ghost to you, available for you as a believer in Christ, that will enable you to live the life that God calls you to live. No more excuses. We cannot make excuses. We have power. Luke 10, 19, behold, I have given you power. You already have it. Can't help the way I feel all the time, but I can choose the way I act. And I've found if I'll act right, my feelings will catch up with my choice. You get that? As long as you keep acting on feelings, you're just feeding them. You're just getting them stronger and stronger and stronger. Verse 10, he has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great are his mercies and loving kindness toward those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. Now, it doesn't say that God is merciful toward the perfect. It says he's merciful toward those who reverently worship and fear him. In other words, you have a reverential fear for God. You're not afraid of God, but you have a reverential fear for God. And that's one of the things that's really missing in society today. And really missing among church people is there's not enough reverence. We want you to know that God is your friend and we want you to know you can be comfortable with God. But at the same time you need to have a reverential fear of God. One of the things that helped me to really start treating people the way God wants them to be treated. Is because I really just got a reverential fear of mistreating people. I actually believe, now listen to me, I actually believe that's probably one of the worst things we can do. Especially for people that are in spiritual leadership. <laughs> I cannot even imagine Jesus mistreating anybody on purpose. You know, sometimes we make mistakes and we get in the flesh, but we can always go back and say, listen, I was sorry, I, I'm wrong and I shouldn't behave like that, please forgive me. Very important how we treat people, and not just when somebody's looking, and not just some people, but all people. All people. We try to make it our business to be friendly with the people that are working in these venues, that are behind the scenes, that are hired by this place, and you know, we may or may not mean anything to them. They may not know or know us, but they know we're here calling ourselves a Christian. And it's not nearly as important to them the fancy stuff that I do out here and all of our bright lights and our media presentations, it's how we treat them. How we treat them. And I've heard some absolute horror stories about ministries that come into these places and the way they act and behave behind the scenes, and I can't stand that. 
God is no respecter of persons. You treat everybody with respect. Everybody. Amen. Lamentations 3, 22. It's right after Jeremiah, but you don't even have to look for it because we're going to put it up on the screen for you. <laughs> it is because of the Lord's mercy and loving kindness that we are not consumed. <laughs> because his tender compassions fail not. They are new every morning. I figure God makes a new batch of mercy every day because I used up all of yesterday's. <laughs> they are new every morning. Great and abundant is your stability and your faithfulness. Mercy is kindness in excess of what is deserved. Mercy goes beyond anything that's fair. And there's always a part of us that's screaming out, but it's not fair. But you know what? It's not fair that Jesus took my sin and your sin. It's not fair that he paid the penalty, the death that we owed. It's not fair that he had to go into the belly of hell and take the keys of death away from Satan. It's not fair that he had to leave his exalted position and come down here and become like a man and die on a cross for us. It's not fair, but he did it. Why? Because of love and grace and mercy. If it wasn't for God's mercy, we, would be concerned. we need to think more about how merciful God is to us. And although I'm not suggesting that anybody should have a bad attitude toward themselves, I think that you need to respect yourself and think good things about yourself. We also need to occasionally remember how wretched we are in the natural without God. Mercy helps those who do not deserve it. Let's go to Hebrews 4.16. One of the most refreshing pieces of scripture in the Bible. I want to read verse 15 too. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand... And sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liability to the assaults of temptation. But we have one who has been tempted in every respect just like we are, yet he never sinned. Jesus understands how you feel and what you go through. That's important to me. I tell my husband, even if you don't understand, tell me you do. Women, I think, in particular, just want to be understood. Yeah. Amen. Don't ask me why I'm acting this way. I don't know why I'm acting this way. But I want you to fix it. <laughs> right? So let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly. Everybody say boldly. Draw near to the throne of God's grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy, mercy for our failures, and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help, and well-timed help coming just when we need it. So when you do something wrong, don't run away from God, run to Him. Meet him at the mercy seat. There's a mercy seat in the Holy of Holies in heaven where Jesus had to take his blood and put it on that mercy seat after his death and resurrection. <clears throat> before he appeared to his disciples for those 40 days before his ascension, he had already gone into the heavens and put that blood there, opening up the way for mankind. Ordinary, average, everyday people to come right in to the throne of God and fellowship with Him. It was no longer just the high priest that could go in there. Now everybody can go in. Because that blood is on the mercy seat. The blood bought mercy for us. 
Now, if you're mad at yourself, why don't you just get over it and receive some mercy today? No matter what God wants to give you, if you won't receive it, for you it's as if he never gave it. Receive mercy. You don't deserve it. Receive it. You should be slapped upside the head, but receive mercy. <laughs> you should never get a prayer answered again, but receive mercy and come boldly to the throne. Amen? I know I don't have a right to anything. I don't have a right to do this. Why me? I don't have a right to be blessed. I don't have a right to be forgiven. But I'll tell you one thing. I understand the program. And if God's given it, I'm taking it. You don't got to talk me into nothing, God. Here I am. I'm a spiritual hog. Gimme, 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 gimme. Not greedy. But I'll take everything that God wants to give me. Matthew 12. God wants us to understand mercy. See, if you'll receive God's mercy, then you can have peace with God. Verse 1, at that particular time, Jesus went through the fields of standing grain on the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry, and they began to pick off the grain and eat it. Now, it was illegal to do that on the Sabbath. Jesus is breaking the law. <laughs> Uh-oh. And the Pharisees are always there watching, and sure enough, they were there that day, and they saw it. You better believe if you make one mistake, there will be some religious devil hanging around in your airspace. <laughs> to say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Now you see there, your disciples are doing what is unlawful and not permitted on the Sabbath. And Jesus said to them, have you not ever read what David did when he was hungry? And those who accompanied him, what they did? How he went into the house of God and ate the loaves of showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat? Nor for the men who accompanied him. Nobody was supposed to eat those loaves of bread that were left on the altar because they represented the presence of God. And it was illegal for them to eat them. But David and his men were hungry. They were out in battle and they were hungry. And somehow or another he had the audacity to believe that his need overrode the law. <laughs> yeah, you're too religious to get that that early, right? <laughs> That's the way I was. When God started trying to teach me this scripture, you know, it was one of those defining moments in my life where every time I opened the Bible it was Matthew 12. And I was just like, all right already, will you tell me what you're trying to get across to me? You ever have that where you just keep getting the same thing? I mean, it's on the radio, it's on TV, it comes in the mail, it's like, and you're just not getting it. It's like, well, I was so legalistic and had such a Pharisee spirit. And you know, if you're legalistic with yourself, you're going to be legalistic with everybody else. My father was legalistic with me and I just entered my relationship with God like that. I was very hard on myself. I was very demanding of myself. And I was that same way with, with other people. And God was trying to break that out of me. He was trying to get me to understand mercy, how to receive mercy, and how to give mercy. And yes, we have the law, if you will, which is now written in our heart. We have the guidelines. And so the law says, if you sin, you shall be punished. But Jesus said, we now have a new covenant. And when you sin, if you ask me to forgive you and come boldly to my throne, I will meet your need even though you don't deserve it. Well, being merciful towards someone is not necessarily something that we always feel like doing. It's something that we do on purpose. We don't let our emotions rule us. And we show the attitude that God would have. Psalm 103 says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. 
And I don't know how you feel today, but I am so glad that God is that way because I need a lot of mercy. But you know, a lot of people have trouble showing mercy because they've never learned how to receive mercy from God. And I really believe when we understand how merciful God is toward us, then it's going to be easier for us to show mercy to other people and not just operate out of some feeling that we have. 